Insulin resistance causes metabolic syndrome and its associated symptoms. Abdominal obesity, high blood pressure, high blood sugar, high serum triglycerides, and low serum HDL, high density lipoprotein. If not controlled, metabolic syndrome often leads to type 2 diabetes and heart disease. I've discussed diabetes a lot on this channel and we'll get to heart disease in the future. But even before metabolic syndrome occurs, the initial biochemical derangement is elevated insulin. Hyperinsulinemia can cause acne, joint pain, early periods in young girls, nearsightedness, skin tags, skin discoloration, PCOS, infertility, erectile dysfunction, enlarged prostate glands, gout, migraines, male balding, Alzheimer's, and even some cancers. Since we can have hyperinsulinemia with perfectly normal blood glucose, how do we know if this is an issue for us? The elevated insulin occurs much earlier than blood glucose issues. Insulin rises to control blood glucose until it can't anymore. But the hyperinsulinemia is toxic in itself and worth addressing. But insulin levels are rarely tested in routine blood work, so how do we address it? In addition, those of us on the journey to reversing our diabetes often want more information about how we're doing. Sure, our regular A1Cs let us know our blood glucose is doing better, but we also want to know if we're fixing the hyperinsulinemia and hence how well we're doing with regards to insulin resistance. Unfortunately, there isn't yet a home test for insulin, but there are several types of tests that can give us an indication of how well we're doing. Blood glucose alone doesn't tell us enough, we need to know how much insulin it takes to achieve the lower blood glucose. I'm going to discuss three methods, the glucose clamp, the craft test, and something called the HOMA IR. The one you're most likely to talk your, a typical physician into ordering for you. Stay to the end and I'll explain how I got my PCP to order it. The uh, glucose clamp, is the gold standard of measuring whole body insulin resistance. Basically, after an overnight fast, they put a steady rate of insulin infused into one arm and a varying rate of sugar into the other arm, with blood glucose readings taken every five to 10 minutes to decide how to adjust the sugar infusion to keep the blood glucose steady. Potassium is also infused to prevent low potassium. It takes a few hours to get to the point where blood glucose remains steady, with two IVs running and a highly trained tech doing the test. Once completed, some math is used with all this data to calculate how insulin sensitive the person is. Given it is time consuming, expensive, and labor intensive, it is pretty much only done for research purposes. There are several related methods linked to in the description box, but given most of us aren't research subjects, they're probably not relevant for us. The craft test is similar to an oral glucose tolerance test, where a dose of glucose is given after an overnight fast, and then blood draws are done several times over a couple hours to determine how rapidly blood glucose returns to normal. Hence, if the person is pre-diabetic or diabetic, it's a common screening test in pregnancy since gestational diabetes has become such a common issue, but it's generally not done as a screening test. The CRAP test is similar to the oral glucose tolerance test in that a specific dose of, glu of glucose is given and blood draws are taken over the course of several hours but the samples are tested both for glucose and insulin. The purpose is to not just see how quickly glucose can return to normal, but whether it takes a lot of insulin to get that glucose down. The craft test is not commonly ordered. I've never even seen it on a lab slip. Unless you have a doctor like Dr. Adia, it's highly unlikely your doctor has ever heard of it, 
let alone has any idea how to order it. But that's where our next test comes in. The HOMA IR is not a specific test, but it compares glucose and insulin from a single blood draw to see how much insulin it takes to keep the blood glucose as low as it is. So you need a blood glucose reading and an insulin reading from the same draw. The comprehensive metabolic panel is a normally ordered blood test and includes blood glucose, so you just need to ask for an insulin test at the same draw. Ideally, this would be a fasting insulin and blood glucose test, so first thing in the morning is a good time, which we usually have to do for a lipid panel anyway. When I was actively reversing my diabetes, my endo enthusiastically wrote the insulin test on request. And a bunch more tests I hadn't even thought to ask for. She was so curious about what I was accomplishing. It's a very simple equation to calculate the HOMA IR. There's a slight difference depending on whether you're calculating it from a blood glucose measured in milligrams per deciliter as done in the US or in millimoles per liter as done in the rest of the world because even when we go metric, we don't get it the way everyone else does. Don't worry about catching the equation. I've included a link to a HOMA IR calculator in the description box below. Okay, so six months after I began my journey when I was off insulin but still on metformin, I had my first set of results. In February of 2020, still on metformin again, which reduces insulin resistance, my HOMA IR was 1.68. In a very hand-waving kind of way, a score below two indicates minimal insulin resistance. I mean, obviously I still had insulin resistance, else I'd not still have needed metformin to control my blood glucose. Here's how I understood my score. Some of the caveats of the HOMA IR are that the scale was developed based on white men. PubMed has lots of articles about the cutoff being different in various ethnic groups, in women, based on BMI, and based on age. But overall, the consensus seems to be that under two is pretty good. But even if my understanding of my HOMA IR score is a bit fuzzy, it's a baseline I can use to compare future tests to. Um, eventually, my endo released me from her care due to the whole not being diabetic anymore thing. As it happened, she'd also helped me wean off prednisone for adrenal insufficiency and leothyronine for thyroid issues, and I was off even metformin by then. So I was just not an endocrinology case anymore. My endocrine system worked fine with just the inputs of a ketogenic diet, copious fasting, and lots of electrolytes. Shortly thereafter, my PCP retired, and when I got around to asking for another insulin test, my new PCP refused on the basis that he didn't understand the test. So I found myself a more cooperative BCP because I'm more honorary than he was. Um, in September of this year, uh, 2021, off even metformin for over a year, I had a CMP and fasting insulin again. So at that point, my HOMA IR was 1.79. So higher than when I was still on metformin and not yet ideal. Hopefully as I continue, I'll get it lower still as I continue healing on keto and intermittent fasting. Note that my A1C says I'm not diabetic anymore, but my HOMA IR isn't yet ideal. I'm still not entirely normal. And though people who know me would probably say I never will be, <laughs> but Leaving personality aside, they don't have a lab test for that. Many people who have never had even a pre-diabetic, let alone diabetic A1C, are already metabolically ill and possibly suffering or developing one of the many other issues caused by hyperinsulinemia. Even when you're in range, a slightly higher A1C causes an increase in risk for cardiovascular disease. 
Hyperinsulinemia can be causing vascular damage right now. The A1C is actually more tightly correlated to heart disease than is the lipid panel. This has been known for many years since Dr. Kraft's original research back in the 1970s. I'll link to an interview with him in the end card. And while the video is quite long, the first few minutes explain who Dr. Kraft is and what his research showed about the devastating disease of hyperinsulinemia.